All right, we'd like to thank you for joining us today. My name is Corey Langley. I'm the Director of Marketing at the North American Trailer Dealers Association. Uh, we've got a lovely talk on the state of the industry in 2020 uh, and what we're looking forward to at 2021 and how it's going to affect you and your dealerships. Joining me today is uh, Chuck Morrison, the Vice President of Truck in America. He's got six retail locations in the, the DC, Baltimore, Virginia area. McKay Allen, Vice President of Connect. Our Vice President of Marketing of Connect, excuse me. Um, Connect is a text messaging uh, software that helps kind of bring in leads to your dealerships. Um, as well as Chris Long, the founder of Connected Correctly, uh, a prominent, prominent hitch installation technical training service consultant in the industry, works very closely with uh, B&W and some other ones. And then we have Eric Yearling from Waymire Distribution, uh, a very prominent distributor in the, in the trailer industry today. And then last but not least, we have Jonathan Spiller, NAPDA's National Account Manager. How are you guys doing today? Doing well, thank doing you. Great. Hey, doing great, thanks for having me. Awesome, yeah, thank you guys for, for joining us. We're gonna get started here real quickly with looking at 2020 and what it actually was for the trailer industry itself um, and kind of where you guys saw challenges or unexpected uh, growth or anything of that nature. And Chuck, I'm gonna throw this one over to you um, being a dealership, what were some of the challenges that you did face in 2020? Well, um, other than the obvious of just keeping our doors open and keeping our employees and customers safe, um, and I think that's what we're all leading into, it was just the lack of inventory. Um, mm -hmm. Just to, and, and giving our manufacturers a little bit of leeway, they, you know, they had a lot of challenges themselves as keeping employees there, and keeping them safe, and you know, and a lot of them ran into trouble where they are shut down for weeks at a time. And uh, uh, that was the most important now is just kind of how do I forecast six or seven months out with the current lead times? Yeah, it's, just, uh, it's crazy. It's been been really crazy. How did those, uh, as you mentioned, shut down and inventory problems like that? How, how did it affect your relationships with your consumers? Well, um, that's funny you say that. Uh, I think they're they're handling it well. Uh, quite frankly, we uh, we had uh, our March was about even. Um, April was our only down month that we've had. Uh, good thing for us is we kind of went into 2020 um, already forecasting 15, 20 percent increase, and we had already started loading in inventory. And let's face it, the the economy was doing great before this hit and uh, we we just kept pedal to the metal and just kept ordering like nothing ever happened, uh, fingers crossed. And uh, uh, we really didn't feel the effects until June and as far as inventory goes, um, where uh, it became just scraping and begging and pleading. Um, my guys aren't much taking bribes, but uh, I'm trying anything and everything I can do to get this, uh, get inventory on my lot. Yeah, uh, we've been as far as even uh, going out of our region, our territory and buying retail and just scooping up units just to bring back up here just so we can have some stuff on our lots. And uh, and I'm back to that point right now where my utility trailers uh, are doing decent. I got a good inventory of those now. I always want more, of course. But cargo trailers, um, equipment trailers, dump trailers, just I'm scraping, um, trying to find that uh, anywhere I can get them. Wow. Okay. And we're going to swing back back around on, on some of those uh, thoughts and ideas uh, a little bit later on in this. Um, McKay, the, obviously with, with being able to look at the technical data and stuff that you have, what, what were dealers, the dealers that you work with, what was the kind of increase in traffic that they saw in 2020? Yeah, it's really interesting. So one of the things we're able to do is we separated out because <clears throat> we work with a lot of different types of dealers. So we looked exclusively at just the trailer dealers who use the connect platform and we were able to isolate like on a per dealer average basis the number of inbound text messages that they all received and i'll just look at my screen here and, and look at some data so for example now this is really interesting because before even COVID happened so you're talking fall of 19 which seems like an eternity ago right you start to see the average messages per location going from 137 in a month up to 291 296 so like even in the fall of 19 you're starting to see the increase 
And then that scales over last summer to 600 plus per location. So you're talking five times what it was in the fall of 19. And then even now, like in February, it's 371 per location, the number of inbound text messages that were received um, compared to you know the February of 2019 at 183. So you're talking like twice to five times as many inbound um, text messages, both from a little text message button that's on our customers' websites, as well as just people texting the dealership. So, and there's a there's a ton of other factors there, but it's I mean obviously you've got a ton of demand. So our the, oh, we've we've kind of gotten sophisticated enough that we can start to look and project, but we haven't seen the drop that you normally saw over the winter in the past. Like when we look back at past years, there's of course a little bit of a drop, but when you look at it on a per location basis, you're not seeing this massive drop that you normally saw over the winter. So that indicates to us that the demand is still really high. Just looking at the data of people that are 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 inbound texting a dealership. Um, over the last two, three years. Yeah. Was there was there anything peculiar or or just different, something that you didn't expect looking at the data from last year? Yeah, I well, I think like everybody, we weren't sure what the heck was going to happen in March and April, right? Like for us, it was kind of one month different, Chuck. It was um, March was like we had a lot of dealers who were ready to sign up who were just like, well, let's just see what happens here. And so our our sales team was freaking out. But then all of a sudden in April, May, I think dealers were like, wait, this is like, we can survive this. This is going to be fine. It actually, in some cases, in, has increased demand dramatically. So that surprised us. The other thing that's really interesting is the um, number of text messages that have attachments associated with them. So our system allows you to attach pictures, videos, PDFs, whatever, to them as you send to customers and they send to you. The number of text messages with attachments to and from um, customers, from, to and from dealers, increased by six-fold last year. And do we know why? No, not really. But it's really interesting to see that people are engaging with one another in a way. And, and I think what it is, my guess and our guess internally, is that people, we all of us during this last year, got used to doing something slightly differently, right? And some of those things are not going to go away. Some of them will, hopefully, um, but I don't think s some of them won't. Like customers got used to engaging with a business in a certain way, and that's just not going to go away overnight. It was convenient, and they get they got used to doing some things in a certain way. Corey, yeah, it's very interesting to, to hear about those data points. And obviously, one of the things that I would assume that a lot of these attachments uh, are being used with are kind of in that parts and service realm. And Chris, yep. I'm going to throw this over to you. What was uh, the parts and service centers that you worked with in 2020? What was it like for for those clients or and those dealers? Well, obviously, you know the lack of inventory, like Chuck had mentioned before, um, and something that I was curious about, Chuck, just to see if maybe um, your experience is the same with some of the dealers that I dealt with. What segment of your trailer sales do you do you did you notice the largest? increase on or the increase of demand on was it enclosed was it utility was it equipment what what was that what was your experience with that well uh we've done a lot of thinking about that and i really i'm going to guess and i i think it's whatever that stimulus check did equal out to be uh <laughs> trailers uh you know they're like you know hey i'm going to do a lot of home improvement uh you know i know lowe's and home people have seen you know just huge huge increases and uh and people are just running out and grabbing you know a little five by ten six by twelve uh, doing mulching around the house and it, and that was spring when it all hit they're stuck at home looking for things to do so that really uh took off uh, was probably twenty four hundred dollars and below you know okay and that, that was not uh and i'm a little different from many dealers i, I don't i'm not a gooseneck uh you know heavy equipment trailer we're we're the kings of five by ten, six by twelve, you know, enclosed and utilities. Okay. Well, uh, even though even though you're not, um, the reason why I asked that question was to kind of provide a context for my answer because to Corey's question, because what we noticed was is the dealers that we deal with, 
their their contractor type uh, customer that buys the equipment trailers for skid steers and and construction equipment that sort of thing that kind of remained at a steady a steady amount of demand while your private consumers uh, that are buying enclosed trailers to go on vacations or trips or small trailers to do things around the house and projects things like that that's what really really spiked um and again you know looking back at 2020 and the the effects of covid uh people having to stay home uh not being able to travel it was it was like a it was like a perpetual labor day weekend um everyone wanted to paint their houses and do home improvements and haul things away and um it was the small trailers that seemed to just disappear from the lots Chris, from a from a consultancy standpoint or anything, did you see dealers that maybe didn't focus on service before or focus as much kind of turn to you and, and really reignite that focus for 2020? Yeah, I think I think the situation really forced a lot of dealers to have to focus on customer service because it wasn't just a, you know, hey, we've got all this inventory come in. This is the one you need and out the door you go. Now, now the dealer was forced um, into a position where uh they had to actively search for trailers and solutions to problems um and some of the solutions to those problems were unconventional i mean we're um i know of one dealer that uh, uh had had turned away from rentals uh for for years said i'm never going to rent trailers again it's a train wreck but this particular situation uh forced him into a situation where the used trailers that he had on his lot he decided to open those up uh to to a rental market and he said that rentals in 2020 uh were off the charts and i thought that was a really cool way to deal with some of those inventory challenges because some people didn't want to really buy a trailer as much as they just needed to do some things so the rental market kind of came back uh quite a bit at least for that that particular dealer yeah I'd say it's definitely one of the the kind of an unexpected positive at the at the time. Are there were there any other positives from the, the kind of parts and service side of it that we want to bring up now before we move on? Uh, obviously, the increase in business was a huge positive. I think that uh, you know, and that's that's what's been awesome about our industry. We've been blessed to be able to thrive in this in these uncertain times because. Um, myself i mean we've been in business since 1982 84 uh there was a split there between those those two those three years but um this 2020 was the busiest year in our history um mm -hmm. i've never seen anything like it and a lot of other uh trailer hitch businesses now mm -hmm. understanding that not every trailer dealer is also a hitch uh seller or installer but the hitch industry just about went off the rails as far as being so busy because with the COVID restrictions, you know, people couldn't go on their international vacations. They couldn't go on cruises. They couldn't go to Mexico. Um, and if you were going to recreate, um, the only real options you had was to camp, boat, fish, bike, uh, or do service or work projects, you know, for yourself or for others, depending on how you were doing that thing. And 95% of all that required trailer hitches and trailers. <laughs> so, uh, uh, an amazing benefit of all of that for 2020 was just the Im the immense amount of demand on the industry. And unfortunately, you know, you couple that that uh, those all time record demand uh, metrics on our industry, and couple that with uh, manufacturers shutting down for COVID for several months of time, just brewed a perfect storm for these inventory problems. Yeah. Absolutely. And obviously it wasn't just uh, manufacturers. Um, Eric, uh, what, what was 2020 like uh, for you guys and going through that? Because as we talked kind of last year, obviously finding um, the materials you need is difficult. What was that like for Waymire? You know, we, 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 we had our challenges. However, we finished strong in 2019. So we had forecasted some significant growth for 2020. So we were set in an inventory position in the first, in Q1 where we were able to, we didn't begin to feel the effects of the COVID shutdown until late Q2, um, at which point in time we were dealt with, okay, we couldn't get certain things, but we still had many other products for the people that had not gotten that boat trailer out 
or had not gotten that camper out. We had those serviceable parts, and that's what we were talking to our customer base about is, hey, look, don't say no. These pieces are here, and it's another revenue source for you. And a lot of them took advantage of that because the uptick in outdoor activities when you were told to stay inside was the only thing you could do. Yeah. Yeah, that's and so looking at that now, I mean, looking at 2020 and and obviously you guys luckily forecasted, you know, positively and stuff like that. But what's what's kind of the current state of importation at the moment? What are we kind of looking at going forward? Well, to quote my purchasing agent, the supply chain is broken. Um, (laughs) Currently, you have uh, uh, you have uh, inbound freight floating out outside of Los Angeles Harbor that can't get into the harbor to get offloaded and companies that uh, were doing a lot of that bringing that stuff in that were supplying our industry are kind of set going hmm what can we do and they're having to change their manufacturing practices you're seeing some more stuff come in from Mexico and as well as Canada gotcha gotcha um Jonathan, what's you know? Obviously, you work a lot in your role with, with different manufacturers and stuff like that. What what are some of the things that you've kind of heard, or, or is it kind of the same of what we've already said? Is there anything we can we can add from what we've heard from manufacturers to this? Yeah. So one of the things that I thought was very interesting and um, that we we wrote about in one of the magazines was there is the the lumber shortage. Um, you know, the, the difficulty in, in getting supplies and then going to these the emergency places to get lumber just to get trailers finished. Um, from the manufacturers going to Lowe's or Home Depot, they were they were out of lumber. You know, there was they, they didn't get it. Um, so even even the the emergency stockpiles that the manufacturers would normally have to to kind of fall back on were just weren't there anymore. Um, you know, as Chris said, you know, people building decks and building new things around their house, and you know, just they were bored. So they went to Home Depot and uh, they started a new project. The project um, was definitely a uh, kind of a hindrance um, to to get a lot of on the, the supply chain as well. Um, and as Eric mentioned, uh, Karen Anderson, our sales director, was actually on Long Beach and said that you can see the container ship just backed up. You know, they, they've got nowhere for them to go. Absolutely. It's an incredible sight. So obviously 2020 had its its uh, downs. It definitely had some ups. OK, let's look ahead to 2021. And McKay, I want to throw this over to you first. Based off of the. Uh, the consumer traffic that you saw in 2020 or 2019 to 2020, what do you think 2021 is going to look like from a traffic standpoint for dealerships? Yeah, so our, our, if the curve holds up, which we have every reason to believe that it will on a, like a per dealership basis, we would project you know growth that is more than the 6 to 8% that I've been hearing from different folks. Like the inbound traffic, and by traffic, I mean the people, not the traffic to like their website, but literally the number of people reaching out to dealerships um, is still continuing to grow. So, like I said, the dip in the winter wasn't wasn't like we've seen in the past um, mm-hmm. for dealerships. And the spring, um, the spring uptick is already accelerating. So, again, we would say it's more than that six to eight percent that I've seen some people project. Um, just based on the amount of inbound traffic. So now we're all the, is that going to be a direct like one to one, you know, directly correlation, right, between people reaching out to a dealership and those who spend money? Probably not. But ultimately, that's it's really valuable data because it allows you to see um, demand. So we think it's going to be significant and, um, you know, potentially higher than 2020. On that on that same note, we talked to you mentioned a little earlier about those consumer behaviors have changed. Yeah. Um, and so looking into 2021, what are some of those consumer behaviors that you think are going to stick around or going to play a heavy part this year? Yeah. So one of the things that we saw in uh, 2020, we launched it, it as actually like just really good timing. We launched a product um, that allows uh, dealers or allows consumers rather to pay dealers via text messaging. So really valuable in parts and service. You simply send a text, they reply back. Um, with payment information and the money goes into your account really quickly and all there's tons of benefits to it anyway we saw that um that uh the amount of of payments pushed through that platform double as the year went on on a per location basis that's one of the things that we're projecting in 2021 is going to continue to grow is that 
you know, we got used to not standing in a in a crowded room and waiting to swipe a card in 2021, right? Whether at a restaurant or, or wherever, or at a trailer dealership. So um, we're projecting that's going to continue to grow, that people like this convenience of being able to pay remotely. And it also opens up a ton of flexibility for the dealer, right? Like it's it's really valuable if, they, if you don't have to have uh, someone standing there swiping cards all day. So again, in a parts and service department, that's one of the things we're really projecting is that things like remote payments and other remote methods of communication aren't just going to go back to where they were. They're going to keep growing. So for, for us directly, the answer to your question is we think the remote payment piece, especially in parts and service, is going to keep growing, Corey. And Chuck, would you would you agree with that? Are there any other consumer behaviors that you think that um, dealers need to be focused on that we're not going to lose in 2021? No, I, I agree totally. Um, a lot of... A lot of it, you know, our website is going crazy, or, or inquiries are going crazy, or text messages in house are going crazy, phone calls, everything's just up. Our door count's about flat, uh, but the people who are coming in are buyers. Uh, they've already done their research and they know we got it and they're ready to buy. So, um, so we've focused a lot on just marketing, um, just revamped everything. Actually, uh, my sister was one of the uh, One's in the restaurant industry. She's a chef in DC, and sure, uh, guess what? She's working for me now, and she's uh, our marketing uh, person. And just because she's a, a lot younger than I, she knows that uh, the social media is a big, big push too, uh, right. and it's working well. And we feel like, uh, like McKay said, that's uh, I think that's what's going to stick around for sure. Um, Eric, we we talked about obviously what the what Long Beach looks like right now and, and all these boats and everything sitting out there. But looking at 2021, what uh, what is Waymeyer predicting as to when um, facilities will be back up to normal speed, production lines are, um, you know, dealers can get their inventory in the, in the times that they normally do. What's your thoughts on that? Um, we originally thought that we'd see that open up around Q3, early Q3. Uh, however, with the rollout of the vaccination and our 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 numbers from this pandemic coming down significantly, uh, been seeing where mid June we may see factories come back into full capacity if they have personnel to operate them. That's mm -hmm. going to be the second challenge that the manufacturers will have. Where am I going to find that employee? Because they haven't been there for a year. True. Very true. Yeah, no. Very true. On the same note of manufacturers, Jonathan, are, is there anything that you think dealers can expect um, that these manufacturers have done, um, other than obviously the challenges that they may face uh, as far as labor force? Um, is there anything that manufacturers are doing to kind of help the the situation at all? Yeah, on a on a very positive note, we've uh, spoken with quite a few who are opening up uh, new locations uh, in different strategic areas around the country to help with uh, with product flow um, and get them get product to dealers quicker. Um, we've also noticed quite a few manufacturers who are changing their their product lineups um, to kind of match what uh, you know, what the industry is feeling. So more towards you know, smaller utility trailers and things of that nature, instead of you know just larger goosenecks. Um, I believe, as Chris said, you know the, the kind of construction and uh, contractor trailers have kind of stayed flat, but the uh, the smaller, more recreational style have uh, have increased. Um, so we've seen manufacturers kind of pivot and and help help push that along as well. So we've we've talked about 2020. We've kind of forecasted 2021 as much as we possibly can. I'm sure nobody predicted a, a pandemic in 2020 either. Um, but we've kind of looked at 2021. Let's talk about what dealers can do now, or or you know what what's something tangible that the dealerships can do to kind of refocus their efforts for 2021. And Chris, I'd like to throw that over to you first. Um, what can be done in the parts and service department? to kind of counteract potential, revel potential revenue loss from inventory? And why should dealers embrace adding more service to their dealership in these times? It's a very large, loaded question. Um, you know, I, I, I'd like to point out something that Chuck said earlier. You know, the economy was good uh, when this all occurred. And something that I would like to point out is that because the economy was good, people were not afraid to spend their money in the middle of this in the middle of this pandemic 
-hmm. So that's the reason why we did have uh, a, a very strong push for these types of, uh, you know, projects and, and, and things that people were doing. They didn't have a problem spending their money. As contrasted back in 2007, when we had that complete mess and a lot of trailer dealers and trailer manufacturers even went out of business because we went into that economic downturn with a shaky economy. People were afraid to spend their money. The one thing that I would like to point out going into 2021 is dealers should be prepared uh, and keep in the back of their mind that we could potentially be set, getting set for another 2007-ish or like type event um, if the economy continues to deteriorate, which it could. Um, I mean, I like McKay's uh, predictions with the data that he's getting on that, and that all looks good, and I don't think that we're going to have to worry about that anytime soon, but there are some markers there to be taking uh, taking some note of, because if we end up in a situation like we had back in 2007, it, it could be it could be really it could be a really detriment to our industry. Now that being said, there are things that we can do while this feast is in to prepare for that famine, mm -hmm. and I think some of the things that uh, dealers could do right now is to really think outside the box of maybe. Uh, the ways that they've been doing service before. If you're a trailer dealer and you don't sell uh, trailer hitches and towing equipment, now is the time to do that. Um, you've got to diversify. Um, if inventory is a problem with your trailers, if inventory is a problem with the equipment you use, or the or not the equipment, but the parts you use to prepare trailers or service them, now's never been a better time to diversify and get involved in, in, in trailer-related products, whether that's uh, trailer hitches, cargo, uh, cargo control, tie downs, uh, things of that, things of that sort of nature. So uh, diversification is key. Another thing too is uh, employees. Um, this this coming up, I think that we're really going to be tested. Um, uh, there's going to be a lot of people that that kind of adopt adopt a, a flight or uh, fight or flight type mentality as it relates to their jobs, their careers, what they're doing. And if there's anything that it, dealers can do to incentivize um, their employees with a good a good work environment and hold on to those people, you need those people. And I know that there's lots of challenges that have been discussed about upcoming minimum wage changes and everything else that could complicate things, but you've got to keep your people right now. Um, uh, so whether that's incentivize uh, their 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 work with your company through better training, or whether that's through um, you know incentives for bonuses at the end of the year, or profit sharing, employee owned type situations, or whatever, you you've got to start looking at a way to keep your people engaged with the business because you don't want to lose your people as as this thing continues to play out over 2021. Yeah, I I think a good. Uh aspect to look at that is the relationships and, and 2021 is a time to build relationships and i think we'll get a little bit more into that but i do want to touch on that relationship status with you mckay um what how do you think the digital relationship will continue to evolve between consumers and dealers going into 2021 or 2021 excuse me obviously yeah, it's, hard to, yeah, it's tough to remember what you were in sometimes um no look i i think um I totally agree with what you're saying, Corey. The ability and the need to communicate with customers is really important. So, for example, if you reach out to your customers proactively and explain inventory issues as they come up, that is going to be a far better situation than waiting for them to come in, them needing something and not you not having it, mm -hmm. um, and them go, having to search around town or around the state to get what they need, or them not buying it at all and not being a customer in the industry. So proactively reach out to customers is a, I would honestly go back through who, whoever bought from you in 2020, 2019, reach out to them. And in, in some cases, just talk about your parts and service department if you have one. And in other cases, point out inventory. Like I promise you, customers are not gonna be mad. They're gonna feel like they're in it with you if you explain you're having inventory challenges. Um, but if you, if, if, again, if they're ready to buy something and they come in ready to rumble and you don't have it, 
um, you know, you run the risk of losing that business. So I think this is an opportunity to really reach out and be proactive. The dealers that are going to be proactive about getting people in the door in parts and service and getting and explaining inventory issues, I think are the ones who are going to be most successful. Um, the other thing I would stress too in parts and service is don't wait. And this is going to depend on the type of dealership you have, right? If you're doing a lot of camp trailers or whatever it is you're doing, but don't wait don't wait for that first warm Saturday in May to come for your dealership to be insanely busy. Like spread that out, start reaching out to people now and getting them in the door while you've got some inventory if you do. Understood, understood. John, are there things that, or what What are some factors that dealers should should emphasize in 2021 based on kind of the relationship that we have with, with the dealers that we are, uh, that we speak with on a regular basis? What are some of the things that they should be emphasizing going this year? So one of the main ones, and it's kind of been touched on a little bit, are relationships. Um, you know, relationships first, as Chris mentioned, uh, relationship with your employees. Um, you know, good good help is hard to find um, and keep them around right now. Um, and secondly, is with with consumers, as McKay mentioned, it's easier to to keep you know an old customer around than to get a new one um you know bring them in for parts and service bring them in just you know just do a wellness check on them just say you know hey how are you doing um and you know nine times out of ten that'll kind of get the conversation started about other things that they can uh they can they can provide for them um and then thirdly uh relationships with manufacturers um you know being on the phone with them ever as as uh, somebody mentioned you know we're all in this together um, right. So, you know, they're, they're, they're struggling to, you know, to get everything uh, squared away as well. So whether you can change up the, you know, something on your order to get it quicker, you know, a slightly different size, slightly different, um, you know, hitch style, anything like that, um, you know, to just help out and probably get products a little bit faster. Um, and then also, as, as we mentioned too, you know, maybe finding if there's a complimentary uh, product line or things like that to, uh, to add to the dealership. Um, if you have all aluminum, maybe add steel. If you have cargo, maybe add utility. Um, you know, so definitely, uh, definitely is time to get you know creative and, and but mainly keep your relationship strong. Uh, and and Chris, it, I believe you have a, a comment to add to that. Yeah, something that uh, we noticed happened as well. Um, some of our dealers, myself included, as it relates to the consumers or the the, the end user public on a lot of the services and things that we provide was finding a new way to engage with your customer given these challenges as far as scheduling goes. Um, what we found is, is that, sorry, I was getting a call there. Um, what we found was, is that it's good to communicate with your customer and say, listen, we have all of these situations going on with, uh, you know, inventory ability and, and whatnot get let not only get them engaged and in, in, in this together but what we begin to see is hey are you up against some sort of a time deadline do you have some kind of a pressing issue are you trying to to go on a vacation at a certain time are you trying to use your trailer for a different you know whatever and and what they were able to do is actually say okay well if you're not some people are like oh no i'm in no big hurry at all i just want to put a hitch on my car so that i can put my bikes on later this spring or someone says no i need to get this done because you know i have a project that has to be done two weeks from now and what the dealers were able to do was was to actually take care of customers in order of priority or in order of these deadlines that they had to mat meet rather than in the order in which they called. I know that that's kind of a mindset that we all have that, you know, this person called me, you know, three weeks ago, so I need to make sure that they're done first. And this guy called me, you know, today, so he's going to have to wait in line. But when, when you communicate effectively and transparently with your customers and you let everybody know that you know there are some people that need this right now um then a lot of people oh yeah if there's someone that needs it feel free to take care of them first and by 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 stacking those up in a in a priority form you're able to take care of more people and still meet everyone's expectations instead of having these false barriers or or you know these non-negotiables that you thought existed when they really don't wow well, wow. and what, one thing on that on that same communication standpoint is, 
uh, communicating back with your uh, distributor suppliers, things like that. Eric, I know you and I spoke recently about some of the things that you're doing with dealers who have expressed issues with uh, getting their inventory and stuff like that and some of the ways you guys are helping. Um, do you want to bring that up on the call? We sure can. Um, I'm going to kind of a play off of what uh, Chuck had mentioned earlier about being about diversifying. <laughs> you know, so many um, dealers want to service what they sell, which is primarily either an enclosed trailer, an open trailer, a gooseneck or such. But there are multiple trailers out there that are served that serve in other capacities. And as we all mentioned earlier on, the recreational industry blew up last year. So that means people were buying used RVs, used boats, used uh, utility trailers and such, which created a, an area for service. You don't want to we're going to have to change our mindset for so long. We went with just in time. Uh -huh. We're going to have to put that on the back burner for right now. And like they mentioned, you don't want to wait to that first warm, sunny Saturday in May to bring your boat trailer into the service. If you're a dealer, you want to communicate your message that, Hey, I am doing this service work now, bring this to me. And what we have done because we, we do of, we have an excellent relationship in the marine industry with disc brakes and surge brakes and actuators and things like that, we've promoted bringing in the A movers to help you get started. It's a small investment, but you're going to be ready when that guy comes in or that person comes to your dealership. Hey, my boat trailer is not working correctly. Can you help me? For so many years, the the dealerships in the trailer industry have kind of said, ah, that's a boat trailer. I don't know if I want to talk about that, but now we're encouraging them to open them up, open up their arms, embrace it because it can be fixed and it is a revenue point. Absolutely. And, and to, to kind of go back to the communication standpoint is, you know, obviously communicating with your supplier, you know, that somebody told you that they were having issues and you guys helped and came up with a solution of some kind and, and are instigate or uh, putting, helping the dealership through that. Insta instigating is a great word. Um, what we're trying to do is, you know, if you if this manufacturer doesn't have this product, then we have to look at another source and outsource some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And we did that. And like a lot of other distributors, they did the same thing and tried to bring these pieces in. Well, then that put a demand on that supply chain that was not being expected. And that's part of what's sitting out in Long Beach is we, you had to go to the import version mm -hmm. at the end of the day, your dealers, our customers needed parts to service things. And as distribution, we had to find resources to make sure that that was able to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so I'd, I'd like to throw it over to, to you, Chuck, because, you know, hearing all this, we've we've kind of harped on it, but you're a dealer. Uh, you're you're in the thick of things. So my first question is, obviously, you said you forecasted, thankfully, appropriately in 2019, looking to 2020, that helped a little bit. But now looking back at 2020, how has that changed your your 2021? And what have you what did you do in the past 12 months to now kind of prepare you for 2021? Well, um like you're saying, it's all about relationships. Some, some wise uh, matriarch in my family, my grandma or aunt, somebody said that once before, and it's very true. It's just staying in contact. I mean, even if it's just talking to my sales guy or the general manager of a manufacturer and just saying, hey, you know, we, we understand, but, uh, you know, I don't want to be that pain in the backside, but at least I'm talking to them and, and feeling their pain, as it were. Um, you know, we... We, I think, I, I don't like that saying. It is what it is, but it, it, that's where we're at at this point. And I really, I think, I believe McKay. I think the business is there, and I think it's going to be there. And hopefully, the predictions, like you said, uh, maybe June of coming back to full capacity or close to, um, we're going to dig ourselves out of this um, whole thing. And somebody brought up, you know, buying different types of trailers. I don't think that's the problem right now. I mean, I buy a whole truckload of green and red striped six by 13 trailers you know some odd thing if i could just because i know i'd sell them right now but going into 21 um gosh we just kind of focus inside and control the things that we can control um i can't control this COVID thing i can't control the you know my inventory issues um to a point i just keep placing orders like nothing's ever happened uh and hopefully someday we'll catch up 
but we looked inside. You know, we started looking at ourselves and improving some of our marketing. Uh, as I mentioned, I mean, we've put a few bucks in a few of our stores uh, as far as revamping the showrooms, uh, adding more parts and accessories for boat trailers, RVs, all that good stuff. Um, I mean, we're about to start. Uh, it's an existing building, but we're we're doing the McDonald's treatment on my store in Baltimore um, starting um, soon. I mean, I hopefully within the month here. Um, so we're just kind of let's control the things we can. And that's what we can control. Um, everything else is in somebody else's hands, not mine. <laughs> and I, I think that's, I think that's an important mindset is, is what, what can you control in this, this, uh, with everything that's going on right now, what can you control? And the one thing, and, and I know it's been touched on quite a bit, but are those relationships? Um, and, being able to that that was kind of the reason behind the association's dealer performance week one of them is we want to provide those opportunities for dealers to look at whether it's videos about marketing videos about increased parts and service sales tactics digital stuff things like that um and it two it's for those dealers that are going to look internally and want to better their operations right now while they have that opportunity um chris i see a hand up are you do you have a comment now or is that from before no that's uh mm -hmm. Chuck said something that reminded me uh, when he's talking about the RV industry. Um, another thing that dealers can do in 2021 moving forward to help diversify and maybe even bring in some extra income. Uh, don't think that just because uh, you're going to work on RVs that you have to do the HVAC plumbing and all the things that are done with RVs. RV dealerships right now are struggling. They, they are literally throwing work away because their, their service departments are so overwhelmed. At this point, they are begging for somebody to help them take some of the pressure off of their service departments. RV trailers are just like regular trailers when it comes to chassis. So when it comes to bearings, brakes, uh, suspension, uh, couplers, all that sort of stuff, feel free to think outside the box and let your RV customers know you can certainly do those forms of work. You know, hey, when it comes to HVAC and, and all this other stuff, we don't really get into that, but we can sure help you with, you know, making sure that your camper's ready to hit the road this spring. Uh, don't be afraid to get underneath those RVs. They're, they're not a whole lot different than uh, than any of the other trailers that you're working on, and you don't have to get into the, the whole RV world to do some of that other service. Absolutely. Just another way to diversify your product offering. That's right. Um, okay, so to kind of kind of recap everything, uh, you know, I I think 2020 was a, a weird and odd year, but a good one for the the industry so far. 2021 hopefully is going to continue that realm. Um, some of the things I'd like to reiterate to all the dealers that are, are now watching this for Dealer Performance Week is we do have this entire week of free YouTube videos specifically for you guys. Um, we have companies like Connect uh, from Ignite uh, or Ignite, excuse me. Um, we have referral specialists like Matt Ward, all, all of these different classes so that you as a dealership can uh, improve some aspect, whether it's you yourself as the owner or one of your people that are working for you. Uh, the entire point is for us to kind of help in that regard um, so that your relationships do get better with your employees. And then they then can help their relationships with your consumers, which overall makes your, your company just that much better. Um, I think it's important to acknowledge, I think we've all acknowledged, everybody's dealing with the same challenges right now. There's product inventory challenges, there's everything. Uh, but I think everyone on this call has reiterated this in some point. We're all trying to help each other. We're all trying to get better. Uh, Eric's point was, was very well made as far as some of the stuff that they've gone out of their way to kind of help dealers uh, bring in uh, and things like that. So I encourage you guys to, to tune into Dealer Performance Week this week um, to really try to gain a greater understanding um, of some of the other aspects that you can delve into. And if that's not your thing, reach out to some of these companies that we've partnered with. Um, some of the companies on this call, we have consultants that you can, you can hop on, whether there's member benefits or some companies just, just do things for any TDA members. Um, so just some things to think about. Uh, we hope you enjoy Dealer Performance Week. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. And, and Chris, Chuck, Eric, John, McKay, thank you guys for so much for being on this call. I really appreciate your time this morning, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for having us so much. Thanks for having me. It was a great time. Yeah, take care.